So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the organizer of the this mini symposium, uh, Zelina Jiang, uh, from uh, Arizona State University, and um, Zelina will be talking about forbidden subgraphs and spherical two distance sets. Welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, Actually, I didn't know that usually organizers don't give talks during their own organized uh, symposium, but uh, it's good to know. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so I will tell two stories. Um, initially, you will be feel like uh, fe you will feel like you know these two stories have nothing to do with each other. But at the end of the talk, I will try to connect these two stories. So the first story I want to talk about is about forbidden subgraphs. And as you can see in the small prints that all subgraphs are induced. Uh, it's not normal, uh, but you know, in this talk, I will never talk about the general subgraphs. Okay, and uh, this is based on joint work with uh, uh, Sasha Polianski. Um, and actually part of it is uh, based on some work in progress. Uh, we have everything, all the proofs, but we just didn't find time to write it down. Uh, if you don't see anything posted on, in two weeks on archive, you probably won't be able to see anything. Uh, okay, so, mm, so let's consider uh, two families of graphs. And in my opinion, these are some fundamental questions that one should be, un be able to answer in spectral graph theory, like what's more fundamental than the following two questions. So define this F prime of lambda to be all graphs with spectral radius at most lambda. So here, when I talk about spectral radius of a graph, I am referring to the largest eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix. Okay, so you take a graph, look at the adjacency matrix, compute the largest eigenvalue. And as long as that number is at most lambda, you put it in this family F prime of lambda. A similar family can be defined F of minus lambda. And the reason that I, spec I want to emphasize this minus lambda is that usually we want to take lambda to be a positive, positive number for this family to be non-trivial. Okay. And these are the graphs with smallest eigenvalue at least minus lambda. And you know, once you define quantities related to mathematical objects, naturally you start to ask questions about classification problems. Like you define genus for uh, oriented surface, you start to ask, you know, what are all the surfaces with genus zero, genus one, et cetera. And uh, in spectral graph theory, we define these, you know, spectral quantities. And we just ask, can you classify all graphs in these two uh, families, F prime of lambda or F of minus lambda. And here's another kind of question that I also want to, uh, that will be the, actually the focus of the talk. Uh, observe that uh, by Cauchy interlacing theorem, these two families, F prime of lambda and F of minus lambda are actually close undertaking subgraphs. Because if you take subgraphs, in our case, induced subgraphs, the adjacency matrix will be a submatrix of the original. Hence, you know, the spectral radius uh, don't increase and the smallest eigenvalue don't decrease. Okay. So you still stay in the family after taking subgraphs. While, you know, whenever you have a family that's close undertaking certain operation, you can start by asking the following question. Can you actually define uh, these families by a, a, a finite set of forbidden uh, subgraphs? So if you're not familiar with this kind of uh, game, uh, think about the case where, you know, we have the family of planar graphs and we know planar graphs are, you know, uh, close undertaking minus. And you start to ask, can I define the, the family of planar graphs by finite to many forbidden minus, right? So the question is very similar here. 
we have a, have families uh, that are close and they're taking subgraphs, we start to ask, can we define the families by a finite set of forbidden subgraphs? So I will come back to this finite set in a moment. Uh, in other words, actually, we want to find a finite family G of graphs such that the family of graphs we're interested in can be defined as the follows. So all graphs such that uh, no member of uh, G is a subgraph of my graph G. And once I collect all these graph G, I get precisely the family F that I'm interested in. So F would be F prime of lambda or F of minus lambda. And uh, here I want to emphasize why we care about finite sets because without this finiteness, uh, the question is trivial because you can just throw in all graphs that are not inside the family of my interest, right? So I can define say F prime of lambda by just forbidding all graphs that are not inside F prime of lambda. So it's not so interesting. Uh, without this finiteness uh, condition, okay? So, uh, so far so good. Any questions about definitions and uh, the questions that, that we are interested in? Good, okay. Um, so you know, again, these two definitions, and uh, we know something about uh, uh, these questions. For example, we know quite a lot when lambda is equal to two. Um, so for example, uh, uh, you see that when we think about F prime of two, namely all graphs with spectral radius at most two, uh, we only need to understand all the kinetic graphs in this family, because once you have two you know, graphs in F prime of two, you can take this joint union of them and they will still be inside F prime of lambda. So, um, so actually all the kinetic graphs in F prime of two uh, are subgraphs uh, of the following, uh, uh, of the following, okay? So, uh, and this is done in 1970 uh, by Smith. Um, and uh, I don't know if these graphs ring a bell uh, in your mind, but these are actually the extended thinking diagrams uh, in, in representation theory, okay? Okay, so we basically, you know, according to this result, we know how to classify or describe all the, all the graphs in F prime of two. Um, and the, to the second question, whether F prime of two can be defined by finitely many forbidden subgraphs, Actually, you can, def you can define them by just 18 uh, forbidden subgraphs. And th this 18 is the best you can do. So there is some notion of the most economical you know, forbidden subgraph characterization for a family of graphs. And 18 is, the, 18 is that number, okay? Um, so now let's shift our attention to F of minus lambda, namely graphs with smallest second value at least minus two. Uh, this uh, class, uh, this family of graphs is much richer in the sense that first it contains all graphs with spectral radius at most two, because spectral radius also, you know, bounds uh, from below all the eigenvalues by minus two. Okay, so there's that. And also it's much more than, uh, you know, F prime of two, namely you can also show that all the line graphs have a smallest eigenvalue at, at least minus two. If you haven't seen this before, here's a short proof. So let's say I have a graph, I have a line graph. It's the line graph of uh, a graph G. And then actually you can write the adjacency matrix of this line graph by uh, I forgot, maybe it's B transpose B minus Q times the, the identity matrix, where the matrix B is the incidence matrix 
the edge uh, vertex incidence matrix of graph G. Okay, so now you see that you know this matrix is uh, semi-positive definite minus two i will show you that all the eigenvalues of uh, uh, L of G the line graph is at least minus two, hence it's in the in alpha of minus two. Okay, so. Um, so it's a much richer uh, family. And what do we know about this f of minus two? Well, in terms of classification, we actually have the following result uh, from 76 by this beautiful paper uh, of uh, Cameron, Gothos, uh, Sidel, and Schutt. And they actually relate this problem to root systems um, uh, um, uh, of um, root systems uh, in, uh, from a uh, representation theory of uh, semi-simple uh, Lie algebras. Okay. Uh, some buzzwords, but here's the result. They show that every connected graph uh, with smallest eigenvalue at least minus two is either a generalized line graph. Okay, so it's some generalization of a line graph, which I will not define here, or it's representable uh, by E8 root lattice, uh, root system, uh, which I will also not define, but just um, to get some sense, you know, uh, the, there are only finitely many uh, connect graphs that are representable by E8 root, uh, root, root system. In other words, basically the theorem is saying that um, all the, almost all connected graphs with smallest eigenvalue at least minus two is a generalized uh, line graph with some you know, finitely many exceptions. So that's probably the best you can say about classification of uh, graphs with smallest eigenvalue at least minus two. Uh, in terms of uh, forbidden uh, subgraph characterization of F minus two, um, here's the result by Booth Maker and the Neumauer building on a sequence of results. So first people can show that you know, uh, um, it can be defined by uh, uh, forbidden subgraphs with at most 37 vertices and then later it's reduced down to 10. But then, you know, by a computer assisted proof, um, these two people can show that, you know, it can be defined by 1812 uh, forbidden subgraphs. And that's the best you can do. Okay. Uh, and it's very funny that when you look at the paper, uh, you know, there's an appendix uh, which says, you know, we list uh, the 1812 uh, forbidden subgraphs. And uh, these actually are, and then you look at the paper, you couldn't find the appendix. And then you realize that these uh, app uh, appendices were uh, somehow written in microfiche, like those microfilm where you need a special equipment to read. Uh, you know, to this day, nobody has, uh, uh, such machines to, to look at the graphs. But, you know, I believe they are their results. Uh, but at least we know it's finite and that, that's actually not that difficult to show. Um, okay, so now let me shift gear and talk about results beyond lambda equals two. And over there, um, we actually can do a little bit better uh, than uh, for, uh, for lambda prime of two. So here, people can actually classify all graphs in F prime of this root two plus root five. And just to give you a sense of this number, this is about 2.058. So it's a little bit beyond two, uh, but not too much. Um, but in general, uh, the answer is lacking uh, for general lambda. So this prompted a question by Booth Maker and Neumau in the 92 paper. Um, Based, I'm paraphrasing uh, their words here, but they are saying that it will be interesting to know the set of lambda for which f prime of lambda or f of minus lambda can be defined by a finite set of forbidden subgraphs. Uh, and the, they specifically said that, however, these seem to be very difficult. Okay. So, so in a uh, in, in the joint work with uh, Sasha, um, published in 2020, um, 
we actually answer the first question uh, uh, precisely. Okay, so it reads follows. This F prime of lambda, uh, the family of graphs with uh, spectral radius at most lambda um, can be defined by a fi finite set of written subgraphs if and only if lambda is less than uh, this root two plus root five. And also lambda is not uh, one of those uh, exceptional values, alpha two, alpha three, et cetera. It's uh, comfortably many exceptional values. And uh, I'm not going to define precisely this alpha, uh, alpha case, but just to give you a sense, um, uh, alpha two is two, about 2.019, which is larger than two, and uh, they increase and they converge to this root five, a uh, root two plus root five. Okay. And actually I'm going to give them some names. So here, uh, actually, let me tell you, let me call this number, you know, the golden threshold. And uh, I will also give this alpha two and then a name called silver uh, threshold. So the reason I call them this way is that actually this root two plus root five has something to do with the golden ratio in the sense that, and this is the golden ratio raised to a uh, square root, uh, half plus the golden ratio raised to one minus one over half. And the golden ratio is half of one plus root five. And uh, the reason I call this alpha two a silver rate, a threshold is that it is equal to beta to the one over two plus beta to the minus one over two, where beta is the unique uh, solution to this beta cube equals one plus beta. And if you look at Wikipedia, uh, people get caught, sometimes call this num number beta, uh, the silver ratio, or there's another name called plastic number. Uh, in any case, roughly speaking, you know, we have a satisfying answer for this question. Roughly speaking, uh, this F prime of lambda uh, can be, has a finite forbidden subgraph characterization as long as uh, lambda stays below the golden threshold uh, with some comfortably many exception. All right. Uh, and in a work in progress, uh, we also answered the second question uh, posed by Bruce Maker and Yumao, uh, namely, uh, uh, you know, we answered the question that uh, the family f of minus lambda has a finite forbidden subgraph characterization, uh, and uh, maybe here you can guess what, what will come. Uh, as long as lambda is less than uh, the silver threshold, okay. namely as long as this lambda is stays below two point zero one nine, we have a finite uh, forbidden subgraph characterization. Um, and um, there are still some open problems around this, uh, namely, uh, we want to know how to characterize all graphs that's between the silver uh, threshold and the, and the lambda equals two. Uh, we have a characterization for f of minus two, but actually can you extend it uh, to the silver threshold? That's, uh, that's probably an open question to think about. And uh, let me mention one last thing about this uh, forbidden subgraph business. Uh, we can also generalize the result to sine graphs. So here for us, a sine, sine graph is just a, a graph where each edge can be signed positively or negatively. And uh, naturally you can associate a signed adjacency matrix to a sine graph. And hence you can talk about largest eigenvalue of the signed adjacency you know, you, you know that you know, such a family of sine graphs is close undertaking subgraphs, hence, et cetera, you can ask similar questions, right? So over here, uh, we can generalize all, uh, our results to sine graphs, namely the family of sine graphs with largest eigenvalue at most lambda uh, can be defined by a finite set of forbidden subgraphs if and only if lambda stays below uh, the silver threshold. Okay. And 
the question about smallest eigenvalue is actually not that interesting because there's a symmetry between sine graphs. If you negate all the uh, signs of a sine graph, then the largest eigenvalue uh, gives rise to the smallest eigenvalue of the flipped graph. So there's a duality between the largest eigenvalue and the smallest eigenvalue for sine graphs. So you can actually formulate a similar uh, theorem for, uh, for smallest eigenvalue. Um, so I know that I didn't show, you know, any proofs, I uh, like serious proofs, uh, but since, you know, I want to tell um, you the second story and uh, try to connect them, maybe let me, let me move on. But, you know, before I move on, is there any questions about what I stated? Okay, good. Um, so let me switch here now to talk about about spherical two distance sets. And uh, there's a, a lot of work uh, dedicated to these problems. Um, uh, but what I'm talking, I'll be talking about will be mostly based on uh, joint work with a team at MIT, Jonathan Tito, uh, Yuan Shentong, and uh, Yufei. And uh, a spherical two distance set is uh, in D-dimensional Euclidean space is just a set of unit vectors, say V1 through Vn, such that the inner products between two distinct uh, Vi, Vj uh, assumes only two values, and let me, let's call them alpha and, or, and beta. And these are sometimes uh, known as the angles, but they are not really the angles between the, the vectors, but the cosine of the angles. And I will mainly focus on the case where beta is negative and alpha is non-negative. Uh, non uh, the other regime sometimes are interesting, mm, but already basically resolved, but you know, mainly I want to focus on this regime. And uh, just remark that if you let beta to be negative alpha, then that corresponds to something called equiangular lines. Um, and the function I want to study is this function. Given fixed angles, alpha and beta, uh, what's the maximum size of a spherical two distance sets in deep dimensional Euclidean space with angles alpha and beta? Okay. And in particular, I want to understand the asymptotic behavior of this function as d grows to infinity. Okay. Fixed alpha and beta, let d goes to infinity. Can we say something about the limiting behavior of the function? And the proposition is the following. Uh, we can actually construct spherical distance, uh, two distance sets in RD with angles alpha and beta of this size. Okay? So I'm going to dig into the uh, details in a moment. But roughly speaking, if you look at there's a linear lower bound in D with some coefficients related to alpha and beta, okay? And uh, so now let me talk about this KP of lambda. So lambda and P are two parameters that you can compute from alpha and beta. Okay? And they are given in this way. Um, and the KP of lambda is just pra some parameter uh, that you can compute from P and lambda. Uh, don't look into the detail too much. Okay? It's some parameter that you, know, you can compute from P and lambda. And there is something called uh, a chromatic number. And this is the largest eigenvalue. Okay. Uh, don't read in too much into this definition. But I want to give you a sense that this case of P of lambda has something to do with sine graphs. Okay. And its largest eigenvalue, and maybe the multiplicity of lambda as an eigenvalue of g uh, of the sine graph g. Okay. That's all roughly you want to know about this KP of lambda. Um, okay, so basically, you know, this law bound says, give me alpha and beta, compute p and lambda. There is some weird uh, spectral quantity related to p and lambda, which is k sub p of lambda, and from that you get a linear law bound on this uh, function of interest. And the conjecture actually is that this law bound is tight. Okay. 
And if you look closer at this uh, lower bound, actually it says that, you know, actually lambda and p are the more essential parameters for your question rather than alpha and beta. So it's possible that you have two sets of parameters, uh, alpha, beta, but they give rise to the same uh, set of lambda and p. But this, uh, the conjecture says that uh, the asymptotic behavior of this function n of alpha, beta, d only depends on lambda and p. Okay. So, um, well, here's a conjecture. You know, we have some guess of how this function behaves when d is large. Um, and, and in the work, in the joint work with the, uh, the MIT team, uh, we show that this conjecture holds whenever P is at most two or for some sporadic uh, lambdas. Okay. Lambda is one, lambda is root two, and lambda is root three. And actually the proof for one root two, root three, uh, is quite different in that paper. Each deploys a uh, different sets of techniques. Um, okay, so it seems that we got stuck. Um, we don't know how to deal with the case, for example, we didn't know actually how to deal with the case when lambda is equal to two, maybe p is equal to three, maybe that's the smallest um, uh, case that we want to know an answer for. Um, but let me backpedal and talk about the special case when beta is equal to lamb minus, uh, minus alpha. Or equivalently, you know, if you look at the definition of P, when beta is minus alpha, P is equal to two. Uh, it's not all, but you know, implies P is equal to two. Um, it, it builds on a sequence of work by Buch and the, you know, Ballard, Drexler, Sudakov and Kivash I will not, don't have time to mention the results. Um, but here's something that connects the forbidden subgraph to the equal angle uh, uh, with Sasha. So we show that as long as I can show the family of forbidden, um, the family of uh, uh, graphs with spectral radius at most lambda can be defined by finite set of forbidden subgraphs. Then the conjecture, the conjecture, namely this conjecture, holds whenever the lambda uh, I have here is, you know, equal to one minus alpha over alpha minus beta. Namely, you know, it satisfies uh, this uh, condition in the conjecture, and the p is equal to two. So basically, this breaks. Uh, this bridges. Um, you know, the two words uh, between the forbidden subgraph characterization and equal angular alliance uh, in RD. Uh, but unfortunately, this is a one way, I would call it a one way uh, connection. Okay, there's a one way bridge from the word of forbidden subgraphs to, you know, equal angular alliance. Uh, but this conjecture uh, for equal angular lines uh, actually was resolved uh, uh, in uh, 2019, uh, but also God knows when it's, it will be published. Uh, so over there, uh, the main tool that we had is the second uh, largest eigenvalue multiplicity. For this work, um, and the trouble to you know generalize this tool uh, for spherical two distance sets is that this tool fails for sine graphs. Okay. So in a sense that for spherical two distance sets, we expect that you know the answer is kind of related to sine graphs. Whereas for equal angular lines, we don't need to deal with sine graphs. We only need to deal with graphs. So the tool actually fails uh, and we have actually counterexample 
uh, to show that the corresponding statement for second eigen, uh, second largest eigenvalue multiplicity fails for sine graphs. Okay, so, but it seems that we got stuck. Um, we don't know how to show this conjecture, but actually, uh, in the in the following uh, subsequent work uh, with the MIT team, uh, we actually also build a bridge uh, between the forbidden subgraph uh, for sine graphs with largest eigenvalue at most lambda uh, to a spherical two distance set. Okay, uh, and uh, it was not explicit there, but essentially what we prove is that if the family of sine graphs with largest eigenvalue at most lambda can be defined by a finite set of forbidden subgraphs. Then the conjecture holds whenever uh, lambda is equal to one minus alpha over alpha minus beta. Okay. And as a corollary, since we precisely know when uh, this family f plus minus of lambda has a forbidden uh, subgraph characterization. Actually, a corollary of that is that we know the conjecture for spherical two distance sets not only holds when p is at most two, but also holds when lambda is less than alpha two. And remember that alpha two is 2.019. Actually, this tells you, for example, when p is equal to three and lambda equals to two, uh, the conjecture also holds. And uh, I will stop here. Great, let's uh, thank Zeline. Uh, is there any questions? So I, well, people are thinking I'll ask you, um, so this, this corollary is meaning it's from your subgraph result, like the recent, it, from, right. from the one that you're about to put out. That's right. uh, I also wanted to ask, um, is there anything like that for directed graphs? Like, yeah. or is it, uh, can you do any, any of the results in particular, this spectral radius results for directed or oriented graphs? Yeah, uh, so the first obstacle I can see is that for directed graph, it's not clear how, how you can define uh, eigenvalues uh, because your matrix is not symmetric. Uh, I mean, uh, potentially, oh, in oh, oh. Case, yeah. So, but I would say that uh, maybe it, I mean, Actually, it makes sense to talk about other families of graphs. For example, let's say your second largest eigenvalue is bounded by lambda from above. And again, you know, using Cauchy interlacing, it's close under taking subgraphs. And uh, uh, you can ask the same question. And that I don't think is, uh, is I think it's wide open. Nobody has looked into uh, these kind of questions. Yeah, and also um, there are actually funny colories of uh, these kinds of uh, forbidden subgraph uh, questions. For example, here's a colory. Uh, suppose you have a quadratic form uh, of the kind. So here's a colory. Suppose you have a quadratic form Q of X one xn of the form xi squared for all i plus uh, ci, uh, ci xi xj i less than j where ci are integers. Okay? And mm -hmm. if you know that the quadratic form uh, of uh, x is less than zero for some x. Okay. So it's not positive semi-definite. Uh, then 
uh, th uh, there exists X supported on 10 coordinates such that Q of X is less than zero. So it's kind of like compactness result uh, that you can see, uh, say, uh, for quadratic forms. And why 10? What is like, what does yeah, it have to so, do? Yeah, um, so because 10 is the, um, 10 is the largest number of vertices in a minimal forbidden subclass uh, for f of two, f prime of two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so maybe uh, let mm -hmm. me actually go here. So 10 is because among all these 18, 12 uh, graphs, uh, the largest, uh, largest number of vertices is 10. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so as a corollary, one can actually show. And uh, this two, this this two is uh, so why why are we looking at f of minus two for this result? Is is, is ah, there yes. an easy way to to say it? Right. So here, if you imagine all these things, okay, maybe I'm off by a factor of two here. I'm not sure, but if you think about this ci. To be just uh, uh, one moment. Actually, there is no two. Sorry. So think about the case where ci is either zero or one. It's a special case for the integer, mm -hmm. but you know, let's just put it this way. Then this quadratic form is actually corresponds to um, an adjacency matrix of a graph with uh, yeah. smallest eigenvalue minus two plus two times identity matrix. Mm -hmm. So that's the connection between the quadratic form I'm talking about here and uh, f of minus two. Okay. Take the adjacent matrix at the two i, you get uh, the corresponding quadratic form state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, any other questions? Any or remarks? Well, if not, uh, yeah, I think that we should thank Zilin, uh, both as an organizer as an, and as a speaker and all the other speakers of today, of all the conference. So let's thank everybody and the survivors. <laughs> they can thank themselves. And I think we should thank the uh, mastermind behind the conference, uh, Andre, for... <laughs> organizing everything. I mean, at least for me as an organizer, if it's not, you know, those emails Andre sent repeatedly to me, the, my symposium was, would not be uh, possible. So, <laughs> round of applause for him. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, and uh, I hope that we'll uh, soon be able to, or relatively soon, we'll be able to do something like that in uh, physically uh, in Moscow or elsewhere. Okay, yep. so yeah, that would be really cool. Thanks a lot, okay. guys. Okay, bye bye, everybody. Thanks a lot. Good night. Good night, yeah. Oh, good day. Bye bye. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.